thank you again for being here. I know everyone's got a very busy schedule, as some of my peers have mentioned before, but uh, thanks for hanging with us. We're almost there. You've had some great talks, uh, and we're going to dive into uh, a topic that my, my coworker Brad set me up for, and I really appreciate the intro that he gave us. So you heard him talk previously about high availability architectures, and what we're going to do now is take what he started and bridge that into how to apply that in a multi uh, multi region cloud gateway scenario as it relates to the equinix fabric and so let's start with the customer journey we see a uh, traditionally we see for most enterprises a two region deployment with equinix uh, deployed on fabric where there is a east coast and a west coast region and Traditionally, I, you know, by the way, I've got on here a very American centric version of an East Coast, West Coast type deployment. This could be, you know, any other type of deployment uh, around the world. It could be London, Frankfurt. It could be Singapore, Tokyo. Uh, insert your region. As long as you get two regions, you can orient this strategy around any sort of uh, global uh, deployment that you want to go with. So we have an East Coast and a West Coast. Uh, you've attached your your hubs in those regions to the Equinix fabric. You've deployed to cloud regions and attached those locally to the fabric as well. But there's a bit missing there in the middle. There's, there's a hole uh, with regards to setting up a true high availability strategy. And so what we wanna do is unpack what that looks like. And uh, there is a, a bit of a secret that I'm gonna introduce you to today. And so uh, let's, let's uh, Let's look at what that secret sauce is. And you heard Brad previously mention you want to take, um, you want to make sure you're doing uh, some of those things in your enterprise network on the uh, on the cloud network as well. So we're gonna we're gonna look at look at how to unpack the the secret sauce to that, and it really lies in the SLA. Uh, and the SLA we're talking about is the SLA around things like Direct Connect, Express Route. Uh, Fast Connect and Google Cloud Interconnect. Some of those cloud vendors offer SLAs around their cloud interconnect product. And if we look at some of those details, we can understand how to uh, enact what Brad mentioned in his last session, which is bring the enterprise network to the cloud network. And so uh, we're going to answer some questions today, like how do we build uh, cloud gateways with multi-regional goals? So we're going to incorporate those. Uh, we also want to take a look at reducing latency as we as we build out these cloud networks we don't want to add any latency to the story so we want to keep that as low as possible and then we want to understand how we can pivot should our cloud strategy change later so we're going to look at uh, some similarities in slas at the end of this presentation hint hint and then we want to also understand briefly how we keep routing respective to their regional boundaries. So we're going to set all of that up today. And again, we're going to unpack this through the secret sauce that is an SLA. And the way we do that is to ensure that we follow the instructions exactly, because if we don't, we may not nail it. And we do not want this to turn out like my first Elsa cake, which was really, really bad. I looked on Pinterest. I saw how awesome it looked. I thought, you know what? The nieces are going to love this. But in reality, let's just face it. I am not a cake artist and it, I did not nail it. So we're going to do the opposite today. We're going to give you a clear roadmap on how you can nail your multi-region cloud gateway strategies. But first, let's talk about some definitions. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. If you've attended the uh, sessions before mine, you've probably heard these terms several times. I have them here as a reference because I want you to take this back with you. Um, cloud gateways is just a, it's a general term for things like uh, Direct Connect or Express Route or GCI, Google Cloud Interconnect. Those are all cloud gateways. Anything that interfaces your on-prem or inside of Equinix network with a cloud network, those are cloud gateways. The fabric should be no stranger to you at this point. This whole conference is about the fabric. Uh, understand that we, uh, we, we, we changed the name recently. So if you hear us saying fabric more often than the other name, that's why it's called the fabric now. Direct Connect is the product that we're going to look at specifically from an SLA perspective next. And um, so it's, it's probably not lost on you what that product is as well. It's, it's their cloud gateway from AWS. 
comes in several flavors. We're going to talk about one flavor today. If you want to dive deeper into the other flavors, then uh, I suggest engaging your solutions architect at Equinix. And then we also use this phrase network point of presence or network pop. Those were the two East Coast, or I'm sorry, the two points of presence on the East Coast and West Coast that was on the first diagram. And that's really the, 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 the brain of the routing for each of those regions. We run our routing through those so that we keep traffic local and reduce latency. And then the last term is BGP. If you've worked at, uh, if you've worked with any of these cloud gateways before, you understand that in order to exchange routes, they want you to talk BGP. Static routes have gone the way of the dinosaur for at least cloud deployments. Um, I know that we still use them in some cases to ensure uh, traffic does what we want it to do, but uh, BGP is going to be your friend in this scenario. So again, let's go back to what Brad said earlier, and that is how do we merge these uh, strategies together? And it really is sort of just like merging onto the freeway here. Uh, we're going to use a lot of layer two uh, VLAN uh, isolation. Everything we do on the fabric with regards to most of these cloud vendors is related to layer two VLANs. We want to keep that aggregate traffic within region. So if, if, we, have, uh, if we have cloud traffic coming from uh, multiple VPCs within a region, there's no reason to to transit that across to the other side of the, of the country or the continent uh, if we don't have to. So if we're creating a very good user story, uh, whether that user is a retail customer or a bank or someone uh, sitting at home, or maybe even you're in your own enterprise, you wanna make sure the latency is as low as possible. So you're not having people wait to check out at, at a point of sale or to click a button on your website. And we also wanna leverage multiple platforms and when I say multiple platforms, what I mean is multiple connectivity platforms to ensure that we're not creating a single point of failure. And then once we have all of that laid out, we want to make sure that we're unpacking the cloud SLAs to understand how to solve their requirements. Because you know, if something happens, you want to make sure that the SLA is there to act as an insurance policy. So again, the merger of networks is uh, and the merger of network strategies is going to lead us to success. So let's take a look at uh, an example. Uh, and this is from the AWS SLA. There are more details within the SLA that I think you should go look at. Uh, I've abstracted a few here that are pertinent to the network, but there is one specifically that asks you to engage with an AWS solutions architect to ensure that you're following uh, the SLA's best practices, uh, just to do a sanity check and make sure that you've done it properly. So uh, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot more in the SLA to unpack than just what's here, but let's go over some of the technical details to ensure that we, we can at least fill in that hole in the map. So four dedicated connections across a minimum of two AWS Direct Connect locations. So what this means is you're gonna have sort of a two by two scenario. You're gonna have uh, at least two connections running to, through two different regions. And that's elucidated by the second point here, no fewer than two connections in a single region. So um, or in a single location. So you can run more, more uh, than two if you'd like, but the minimum for the highest SLA is two. And then the third one is important to understand, especially with AWS, you have to have one connection local to the region from which you're deploying uh, your, your resources and uh, from your Equinix uh, location. So with regards to AWS specifically, each direct connect on ramp to the cloud region is mapped. So for example, in Dallas, uh, when you create a local connection to direct connect through AWS uh, in the fabric in Dallas, that's going to map to the east region. And while Dallas is certainly not local to the Ashburn, Virginia area, that's the local mapping for that Dallas on ramp. So just keep that in mind, understand where your on ramp local region is. and uh, you'll stay safe from that regard. And then for private endpoints, which we're using here, your workloads must be deployed in two or more availability zones. This has nothing to do with the fabric, but I put it in here just as a best practice because if you're not putting your workloads in multiple availability zones within that specific cloud region, then uh, you wanna make sure you're bridging those availability zones because Direct Connect also uses multiple availability zones. So let's take a look um, and maybe fill in that map, we had a, 
we had the base map here again this is uh we're, we're starting from where brad was uh previously where we've got two regions deployed we've got equinix fabric deployed on the east coast and the west coast and then one thing i didn't mention that is worth noting here we have a broad uh availability we have a broad uh, uh selection i should say of nsps and uh, carriers within our uh, data centers to help you also create enterprise networks so uh, let we've let's say that we've stood up a long haul connection from at and between our points of presence and now let's start filling in this map according to that sla so in the first situation here what we've done is we're going to take a primary secondary connection and we're going to use the fabrics remote capabilities to connect to ourself remember that was one of the ways that brad mentioned in the previous session that you could build a high availability network between your regions which is connecting to yourself and so uh, we're going to use the fabric we're going to point to ourselves and we're going to bridge that connection and then on top of that we're going to start creating uh, networks uh, connections between the cloud networks so at the top there you have what's called vpc peering and this is where we use aws's network to peer with itself and then additionally what shouldn't be missed out here is within the region we have also created uh, high availability connections from the fabric to the local region remember that was one of the first requirements and then the next piece is to fill in that two by two which is to also target two connections from the remote region okay let's say the east region you're going to take two connections from the fabric and you're going to point that specifically at the AWS West region and the fabric will use its uh, remote connectivity services to get you to that remote connection and specifically for the West connection we're going to target our Seattle Metro and it's going to automatically route you over to the West 2 region and this is going to again follow that primary secondary or as I call it just an A path and a B path you heard Brad mention earlier that it's not really primary secondary uh, because all of our children are important to us. So we call it an A path and a B path sometimes. And then likewise, from the West Coast region, you're going to create an A path and a B path uh, a, across a remote connection to the uh, from your West Coast hub. Let's say it's in uh, Silicon Valley. You're going to target the DC Metro, which is going to dump you into the AWS East region for high availability there. And then on top of that, we don't want to forget our friends at the HQ offices and the branch offices. We would be remiss if we didn't mention that we acknowledge that there are uh, points of presence that you may have outside of the Equinix ecosystem. Uh, putting those onto the carrier networks and getting those regionally routed into uh, your Equinix hubs is going to save you a lot of this cross uh, cross continent or cross uh nation traffic it's going to bring that latency down and so what i've done is i've drawn two bgp routing domain uh little uh tick tick boxes around the east and the west coast there and that's just to help you uh, help remind you that bgp routing within these domains is going to help you uh keep that latency low uh additionally when you're communicating those bgp routes across your domains you're going to have one two three four remember we talked about vendor diversity and connection diversity you're going to have four different ways to get across the continent should one of your paths go down or more importantly should a cloud region go offline you're in a position to now handle that outage and make sure that your cloud uh, footprint stays online that your equinix footprint stays online and that all of your edge locations like your HQ offices, your branch offices, or your retail locations stay aligned as well. So Eric, Eric real quick, um, there's, yeah. there's a question of when was the last time the Equinix fabric uh, in a region failed or a region got isolated? And how often does this happen? Uh, I clicked to uh, answer this live. Um, I was thinking more along the lines of the, the various ways in which um, everything from a customer equipment switch and, and their responsibility mm -hmm. through our multiple points of presence if you want to talk through sort of the, the areas and the, and the resiliency that's built into those paths yeah we i mean just like every other uh, vendor out there we also experience chassis uh line car and outages uh sometimes we have maintenances that we need to do just to keep the platform up to date we do software releases and things like that so 
um, yeah, we've, we experience outages. I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't call it regularly, uh, but they do happen occasionally. And we address those with our customers because we too have an SLA that we want to meet. Uh, so we're making sure that our customers are deployed in a highly available fashion, both on the fabric and inside of the Equinix uh, data center with regards to power feeds and things like that. Uh, when they happen, uh, if, if there's a lesson for us to learn collectively, we go back and make sure that we have the proper architecture in place. Uh, so we rarely have outages uh, due to the redundancy of the architecture, but it does happen occasionally. Uh, if you've had one of those or if you experienced one of those and there's some heartburn there, please let us know. And we want to address that as quickly as possible. Uh, Eric, I think there's another question here. Uh, how do we decide whether to use a carrier network or using cloud transit and what are the pros and the cons? Uh, this is this is a nuanced question that we could sit here and try to answer for a long time, but uh, the long and the short of it is, what is the priority and, and what's the use case for each of those connections? If you have voice communications that you need QoS for, or you have a, a production uh, type of connection that you need to go East Coast, West Coast, I would try and put those onto maybe a carrier network uh, because they will have QoS baked in, they will have uh, a very, very robust, um, I would say multi-pathing uh, baked into their network as well. The Equinix fabric uses the same types of networks to create its overlay on top of that to do the bridging from region to region. So we're using our friends in the carrier space to create those networks. So you're gonna get the same type of uh, enterprise grade underlay. What we don't do on the fabric is uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have a QoS mechanism on the fabric. We simply pass that traffic along. Uh, what's great about the fabric, however, is you can allocate specific bandwidths to each virtual circuit. So you can sort of solve for QoS that way. Um, but that's how we delineate it. And then with, with regards to the cloud networks, I would say just give it a try and load test it. Load test the cloud networks as much as you can before you go into production to ensure that there's consistency both in latency and in the speed. Uh, we've seen sometimes that the cloud networks are shared uh, and the throughput and the latency may not always be as predictable. Uh, but again, load test that and make sure it fits your use case. So we're at about one minute left. Um, we had a poll question, but we're running short on time. So uh, let me just run back through some of these. We want to keep the traffic in region. We want to set up multiple paths and go unpack that SLA. Look at the SLA for your vendor specifically, and then eliminate single points of failure everywhere, just like we did on the fabric. And so with that, uh, let's skip the poll, Sally, and see if there's any other questions before we get out of here. And Eric, were there any other questions that came up in the chat? Uh, I have not seen any, nope. Okay, fantastic. Well, with that, I wanna thank the audience again. Brian, thank you for the awesome intro. I'm gonna hand it back off to you. And before I do, I wanna thank my colleague, Eric Zinder for being here and supporting me. Uh, he's been great in handling the Q&A. And so thanks again to everyone. <laughs>